Please show your appreciation for Andre's recital. Well, welcome to event four of the 69 events uh, at this year's Festival of the Sound. Concerts, conversations, and cruises, three Cs. Uh, cruises here on Georgian Bay in Paris Sound, Ontario. Uh, today, I'm delighted that we're starting these uh, series of conversations with a longtime colleague and friend of mine, Andre Laplante. And Andre's been playing Liszt, as we all know, a wonderful recital of Liszt's, uh, the first book of the Année de Pèlerinage, the Italian book. And that begs a question, Andre, why the first book? Why the Anne de Pellerinage? Uh, it was actually the second, right? Second book, I, I'm yeah, so sorry. Yeah, okay, sorry. First book I, was I, the thought, Swiss book. I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought I played, that's right, that one, that one is the first. Sorry. Uh, why? Well, because, well, for many reasons. I mean, I think I play, I play a lot of his music. Uh, through the years, I learned an enormous amount of repertoire by Liszt because I think he really had, I mean, to be very clear about it, I think he really had a bum rap. You know, in his in his uh, in his legacy and in his history, I think we have to separate uh, two elements with this. So we have to separate the medium element, what is pianistic, mm -hmm. uh, and what is musical. I mean, we really have to look at it that way. Everything he composed is extraordinarily pianistic, well composed for the, the medium, because he was a great pianist himself. The problem was he, 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 was live, he was raised as a child prodigy, obviously, and he started doing tours when he was six, seven years old. He ended up playing for Beethoven when he was nine, I think, or something. Uh, you know, he was everywhere, and he was very known as a, as a young uh, child prodigy like this. Uh, and I think that he did not particularly maybe relish being a child prodigy. And, but it, it stuck with him uh, for a lot of his life, especially in his 20s, where I think uh, he, he felt maybe that he had to prove, uh, make a name for himself uh, pianistically because he had such a talent for piano. He was the first one probably to treat the piano like an orchestra mm -hmm. uh, after Beethoven maybe. Beethoven started, but in a classical style, obviously. But, but Liszt, I think, was really went... Uh, uh, we went from an ensemble to the Philharmonic, if you will. <laughs> I mean, uh, with Liszt, it was like really hugely uh, orchestral, hugely colorful, and very difficult by the, by, by the same token. And uh, he was perceived as being able to play all these notes and then da 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 da. But what is important is that even if there are lots of notes, in the Dante Sonata, for example, there are tons of notes in there, but, uh, but it's great music, you know, it's like the, the, the intention of, of expression and the style is, is really, I think, is really, really great. He's been uh, a pretty special composer for you um, throughout oh your yeah. career, oh hasn't yeah. I mean, You've always yeah. featured his music. A very, very special, and also I always thought <clears throat> uh, he was very adventurous harmonically to the point where his last compositions, for example, are atonal. I mean, they, they, they finish when they finish, you know. It's like you suspend it totally up in the air. And if you go a few years after that, a few years after his death, which was eighty six. You know, you're getting you're getting to the young Schoenberg and and uh, the, you know the, uh, the Viennese school. And so he had an influence on these people because the young Schoenberg was very romantic in style, and he had an influence on these people, and and he helped these people write music that were. Uh, that was at atonal, and did, uh, the you know uh, the invent the decaphonism after that, and then Webern came on the scene, and uh, we we had a language that th there was a tremendous evolution of the of the musical language after that. Now you've al you've alluded to this already, saying that Liszt was a composer, or was regarded in some quarters as a composer of excess. Uh, his music's yeah. too extravagant. It's flashy. It's showy. Um, it, it's sort of all out there, as we'd say today. Have you noticed a change in perception, the way people are receiving this these days, as opposed to maybe 20, 30 years ago? Uh, I suppose that, uh, well, there is, uh, you know, there, there, I, I, I think simply that maybe there is a, in my own personal experience, I think I could say, if I only answer for myself, I think I could say yes. But at the same time, uh, I know I can play list well, and I feel that uh, he's, of all composers, he's one composer that you should not play if you don't believe in him 
hundred percent, because uh, his form is extremely flexible, but it can sound that uh, that same form uh, can sound very uh, unbuttoned to say the least if you if you don't play it with a certain taste and a certain style yeah. that's appropriate. And a lot of people come to list and have this kind of virtuoso approach and and you know there's nothing poetic left or nothing nothing uh musical left and and they bang keys uh and then it's maybe i don't know i mean i guess it must be impressing some people it doesn't impress me but you know uh i think i, I that's why i place music exactly it's to it's to show the poetic side of Liszt and the musical side of Liszt, because when he decided to compose really good music, he could sit down and do it. And his writing for the piano was still phenomenally good. Um, and when he decided to play, well, I mean, you know, the, these fantasies and showing off uh, how fast and da da da, he could do things. He, he also composed uh, pieces that were phenomenally interesting for the piano. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's more interesting pianistically than musically. Now, this said, he also did, uh, that piano is so phenomenal, he, he did uh, one piano and two piano transcriptions of all Beethoven symphonies, for example, because he realized, he realized that the, the, the orchestras in that time were, were pickup orchestras. I mean, you know, if you wanted to hear a Beethoven symphony, you had to get the score, get everybody a score, you, you got to get a copyist to copy every part, put it on the music stand, and, and ask people if they would like to come and read the symphony. So they would read once or twice, if they were lucky, and then, you know, the, the end result was not very, very good. And he thought, Obviously, he knew Beethoven was a fantastic, you know, had been a fantastic figure. So he did the transcriptions not to show off his ability at the piano, but to help Beethoven being known. He did the same thing for Berlioz. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, you know, the Symphony Fantastique he has for piano solo. <laughs> you, you know, you got to, it's, it's, a, it's phenomenal, you know, the to Schubert do songs, of the course. Schubert songs, yes, exactly. Yeah. And he thought it was one way to, you know, to do uh, publicity for these people so they, they would be known. So there is a side of him on top of the creative side that is extraordinarily generous. Yes. And I really want to emphasize that. But, but you know, I think it's a bum rap that people um, remember him only as a virtuoso, which he was. But, you know, if, like I say, um, if, you have, uh, if you separate the elements all the time and you go on the virtuoso side, instead of trying to marry the two elements, of course it's going to sound like key banging but but if you try to marry both sides it's that's when it comes I alive. I think a number of pianists these days are obsessed with the virtuoso side of course because there's list the competition composer yeah that's you right know, he's, he's very much that's a right. comp competition uh, well competition challenge. competition yeah I know it's it's uh, it's I think uh, there is competition and there's healthy competition and there's unhealthy competitions and I'll leave it uh, in a sense, I'll, I'm saying, you know, I'll leave it to the young because I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you've been <coughs> I'm there, not you've in done that, that, that in that time. I did, I did my part of this and I was yes. not, I was not extraordinarily happy doing my part of this. Um, but, um, I always decided if I go to competition and say, if I play list or not or whatever, that I would play it as a concert and they get the music or they don't. And, uh, you know, that, that, that was it. Um, I have, more than enough concerts anyway i mean for for myself i'm doing very well i'm very happy in what i'm doing and most importantly i think that's it's the growing element i think uh, uh you know every time for example every time i came to paris on i feel like i've done better and better and better year after year well, that's today that's was my a wonderful that's performance. my performance th yeah Let's that's just my back no, up but it's a the growing bit, thing that's important let me know? just back up a little bit about Liszt's piano music mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about one or two works here or there you played the second book of the Annie de Pellerinage, uh, about 60 minutes worth a good 60 minutes worth of music all three books are about three hours of music mm -hmm. um I want to take a guess how many minutes of music he comp how many minutes of piano music he composed oh my god he has he has more enormous i, I it was it would be a wild guess because his production is more than schumann and chopin put together and i think there was there was another romantic also i think much more i'll than, give you a clue these, it's uh, a 20 gigabyte download 
a 20 gigabyte. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's a 2011 answer, <laughs> if I ever heard one. Yes, All right, it's uh, 99 CDs, 90, one yeah. big box. Oh my God. 7,266 minutes. I had, I, I but with Andrew Laplante's tempo, six and a half thousand minutes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I knew it was a ridiculous figure like that. It's, it's amazing. And you have to realize also that they were traveling, they were traveling uh, with horse buggies and stuff in that, in that time, you know. And also the other thing is that they did not have the pens that we have today, you know. Yeah. I mean, they, they had to, I mean, that's, it, it, it sounds maybe insignificant, but it's not. You know, when you, when you compose a piece and you constantly have to dip your pen like this and yeah. have a production like this, he has like, I think I read four books of correspondence yes, that, that thousands he had. And thousands of like letters. an unbelievable yeah. amount of correspondence that he had. Uh, all the concerts that he organized, that he conducted, because he was also a conductor at the end of his life, especially. Uh, I mean... His orchestral music, his uh, choral music, everything, uh, everything. His songs. Yeah, he was yeah. everywhere, and I think he was uh, one of the most influential, influential force in music. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You share a hairdresser, don't you? The what? <laughs> the, I share the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we say that. I don't speak Hungarian, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, Liszt never spoke Hungarian in his life. No, that's also right. that's a that's a known fact because he was out of the country for too long. And he spoke German basically, but no, it's no. I've been told. Yes, I've been told. It's funny, but uh, I don't know. Let's I, I look know. at some of the 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 real achievements. You mentioned a lot of them, but let, let's look at them point by point. And give me your thoughts. Liszt basically invented the piano recital. I mean, nobody gave recitals on a, nobody toured uh, to give piano recitals side profile on, you know, to, to an audience who came specifically to hear him. So he's responsible for all that. For, really. for, uh, for all that, yes. Uh, he, I don't know how many concerts he played in his life. My God, that would be, that would be another statistic yeah. that would be amazingly interesting to know. But uh, no, he was, he was the first one, yes, because he, he had a pretty phenomenal memory. And uh, he could, I, I think he had what we call a photographic memory. Uh, yeah. He could look at the score and pretty much, you know, imprint it in his, in his brain like that. And having the means that he had, uh, it, you know, it didn't take him a very long time to routine technically whatever he, he had to play. Um, so I think he had an enormous repertoire and he was going around uh, playing all these, all these, all these pieces uh, by heart. And little by little, they, they became longer events with an intermission. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, bef because the events before were mixed, he, he had a little bit of ensemble, a little bit of orchestra. Yes. Uh, kind a of little a musical bit sandwich, that, really. Uh, yeah. Piano in the middle uh, exactly, of it all, yes. Exactly. Sometimes yeah. a Beethoven sonata for violin and piano, yes. then a Beethoven piano sonata. And he did some of that, at, especially at the beginning. But then uh, he decided that he, want to, um, he wanted to be on his own. Uh, and I think one of the reasons also was he wanted to be on his own to play the music he wanted to play, and those Beethoven symphonies we talked about, and, mm -hmm. and, and to, uh, you know, to do... He was already extremely known, extremely well-known at the time. He didn't I imagine he was there, the, he was the right man at the right time too, because yeah. uh, the pianos were changing in those days, weren't they? And they were able to take the more uh, powerful music... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And larger yeah. audiences. That, That's right. Uh, That's correct. Recital. Yeah, in this time, pianos had become, uh, they added, they usually finished on the F in Beethoven's period, the, the, low, the lowest F. Uh, they added to the, I think they added to the B or the C. Uh -huh. uh, the last A came after, but they added a, uh, a, a fourth. Uh, so I mean, it was it became much wider, and the sound projection that you could have, I guess, must have been very inspiring for him to write orchestral music on the piano because <laughs> the, the possibility was there. You know, the possibilities were there. I think Liszt's also responsible for the pianist as a star performer. You know, the the the, the charisma and the, the showman performer. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are your feelings oh, on that? Is, well, is that a mixed blessing? Or? There is, no, I mean, you know, I, 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 I think anybody should play what they really 
pleased. They were really pleased with. I, I'm just saying that as long as you do it musically, <laughs> you know, and not uh, and not. Uh, yeah, I mean there is there is glamour in playing a program like I did this afternoon. It's glorious. I mean it's it's so glorious musically and pianistically, and and if you're on top of your of your uh, of your game, you know, of your means, it's it's glorious to play that music. It's it's totally fantastic. I think. Uh, I think we have the same feeling as a, as a conductor with uh, the Berlin Philharmonic would have. You know, I mean, it's it's a gl very glorious. Um, uh, so the, there is that side, but but I have to I have to for myself. I must answer uh, that I developed all these means and all that technique. Uh, because of concentrating on the musical values. I mean, music always came first. I never could separate the, the elements and do, mm -hmm. uh, just do exercises to do exercise. I, I needed to hear something. I needed to hear the movement in the music. And by hearing that movement, I developed a, a, a bigger technique because it stayed very fluid. And but there is another with, element there as I, I well, think. I suspect. I mean, m maybe star is, is the wrong word, but I wasn't using it in a negative sense. But the, 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 the pianist as, as the, the medium there. Um, if you're feeling that an audience is right there with you, mm -hmm. Um, you can, that feeds into your performance Absolutely. itself, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. That's, that's one reason why I still play. Because, uh, because it's, it's it, it, like this afternoon, I must be very grateful for uh, the people that, that listened to the recital because it was fantastic listening from the very beginning. And, and that creates a kind of, uh, you, you, it supports your concentration sort of thing. I mean, it creates a, an atmosphere and you know that uh, you give more, you know, it's like you, you can give more because you can concentrate more deeply. And, and on stage, if you develop the, the attitude of really listening what's coming out of the piano and really listening to your projection becomes a fantastically creative uh, moment, you know. When, when uh, I, I think everybody helps music, uh, we're, all there. Mm -hmm. we're all there. I mean, that's the purpose of art, isn't it? It's to bring people together. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, that's the whole purpose of art. I mean, whether you go in a gallery or you go to a concert or you go to, to anything artistic, it brings people together. Sometimes it's portrayed, though, um, a little bit over the top. I, I posted on the festival blog website a picture of uh, several uh, female listeners absolutely swooning on top of the piano. Oh. Listener, with the, with the <laughs> <laughs> Listener with the Z or without the Z? Listener with the Z. Yes. yes no, well, right. not as that's much right. a Z as, as a, a hero worship. Listen, yes. <laughs> but a lounge lizard? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Have you ever had women swooning at your concert, Sandra Laplante? Uh, uh, you want a yes or a no, or a maybe? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that says it. Oh, all. you want a maybe? Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's part of the that's part. You know, that's that's fine. I mean, a lot of people, but also what I came to realize that that's a lot of people. Um, I love, you see, I love these events like this afternoon, like playing, playing in, a, especially the summer festivals, because I feel, uh, I mentioned the audience, and I'm grateful for the, and a really good audience, but people usually come to these events because they want to listen to music, you know? Yes. And you know that. I mean, they don't, I mean, you don't come to a concert on Sunday afternoon when it's beautiful like this because you, 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 you refuse... Uh, you know, you refuse to enjoy the day, so to speak. And, I, and I'm very grateful that people think like that and, and really want to listen Absolutely. to the music, you know? Yeah. And that's very, very, very important. Very important. It's very inspiring for me, too. I mean, it's, it's like I say, the purpose of art is to bring people together. And, and I think that's what happened this afternoon. And, and, and it's a very important thing. Now, you know, the, 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 whole, the whole glamour thing, I mean, of course, there is also, there is always, whether you want or not, you know, if you're, if you're on stage all the time, you become... I mean, part of you becomes a character. Maybe part of you becomes some somebody. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, call it whatever you want. Someone in the news. Someone, you know. And and you know, maybe you can. Maybe you can project 
a lot, uh, you know, on, on, on a person, which is normal too. Um, I, I found for myself that I'm, you know, I'm trying to stay, to, to be very accessible uh, to people and stay, stay, stay simple, you know. But um, I found also in my own experience that uh, when, I, when I went to concerts sometimes and meet some people after the concert, I, I, I would have been better not to meet, <laughs> not to meet them. So, I mean, you have, you have, you have all kinds of things. I think, I, think, uh, I think as long as the people are coming and listening to a concert, it's, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Let me put another thing that List did, and again, you, you, you've touched on it. List was uh, pretty much the first pianist to include other composers in his uh, recitals. Before that, you know, people played their own music. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, th th that's really what, what, what a pianist did, or, or an organist or something. Um, List shared a lot, didn't he? I mean, he wanted other people to come forward, yeah. not just the Beethovens of the world, but Lesser no, composers uh, well. lesser composers as yes. well, exactly. Um, and that's how he started programming different, uh, d different pieces and, uh, and, you know, with his own transcriptions, he realized that, like I said, the orchestras were not really that good, so uh, everything became pretty much piano solo. And that's how the recital was invented. Um, composers used to play a lot, and Liszt certainly did of his own music. Have you ever composed? I did. I did. You did? Uh, no, I did. I did uh, did a string quartet, actually, uh, a, a wind quintet that I wouldn't show to anybody, really, but uh, <laughs> uh, and a sort of suite for piano and violin and some piano pieces. I, mean, I was amusing myself doing this. Uh, I think it's very important to do. I think it's very, very, very important to do because you, you deepen the language, you know. Do you music ever play is your really own music? A... Have you ever played your own music? Like no, music? I did not. No, I did not. No, I did not. Um, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I realized, uh, I, you know, I, I could be a composer. That, 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 that is definitely something that interested me. But I did realize also that it, it's extraordinarily uh, time demanding, you know, it's like it's, you need so much time. Mm. You need so much time to, to develop a concept and to develop something because everything is different. You have, you either sit in front of a piano suite or a symphony or, or something that's inspired by, uh, by some, you're trying to write a portrait maybe or a character or a place or poetry. So, I mean, every experience is very different and you need, you need to, you need to find your own voice, I think, on the, uh, yeah. uh, in, in the long term, and I think to find uh, find an artist for an artist to find his or her own voice is a, is a voyage. I mean, it's long, it's long. I mean, you know, it's not it, it's not done like this. No, it, it takes it it takes a while. So it would have taken a lot of my time, and I, I could I, I I still could have been a pianist, uh, but I would have played like a composer. <laughs> not not a. No, no, and, and and I like it. My, mind you, I love people who play like composers because it's they're not really they don't really care about the, you know the perfection of it all, the perfection of the medium. But they can sit down like Leonard Bernstein was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, it's funny how that's changed, fantastic hasn't musician it? like that. When you, you think of the great composer pianists, mm -hmm. you know the Godofsky, uh, yeah, yeah. you know the, 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 that that sort of generation, Bazzoni, and you know yeah. all those people who who not only had the chops to play, but you know. They also oh yeah, the, the polish. With the but they came. Ones. They came from the list tradition, though. I mean, they yes. came. You know, they, they all yeah. came from the list tradition, which was putting an emphasis, of course, on on, on, on the medium and and uh, and uh, and the music. Um, so they were all trained to be virtuosos, really. And Godowski even pushed it. Oh my God, he even pushed it so far. <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, and it's interesting musically, it's always very interesting musically, but once again, you know, it's a kind of technique you have to develop with time, and uh, it's time. To be, to be an instrumentist is time consuming, and also you have the whole traveling thing to consider. You see, I have about 50, 60 now concerts uh, a year, and that looks like not such a big number, but it's incredibly big because you have to go you have to be out of where you live for at least three days per concert yes. so that's that's half of the year really you know uh, that, that I'm on the road 
One of the main things with Liszt, when we speak about Liszt's piano music, is he, he, uh, the technique behind it, you know, the, the, the chops, as I just said. Mm -hmm. um, and Liszt really seriously advanced piano technique, didn't he? Um, yes, I mean, he, he was. No, he was. He did it. He did it in in a new way. He did it in the in a uh, totally orchestral way, and uh, it. Uh, I think it it gave an enormous push, uh, and like I said, influenced the, the, the 20th century. I mean, the yes. early 20th century enormously. Uh, Chopin, I mean, one of his contemporaries, did it, but in a, in a much more classical way. I mean, you know, we think of Chopin as being a very romantic composer, he, they, which, I mean, he had definitely uh, pieces that uh, most of his production, I mean, actually is in, in a very romantic character. Uh, but uh, the basis of his composition, the form of his compositions are not as wild as Liszt. I mean, they're, they're, much, mm. they're much more classical in character. So, so Chopin advanced the instrument, but in a very, it was the, 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 the apotheosis, if you will, of classical technique. Uh, like the etudes are the apotheos of classical technique, you know, like the clarity. And they're, they're, they're written with a minimum of notes. I mean, there are not that many notes in, in the etudes, Chopin etudes. You can memorize them very easily, very, very easily. But, I mean, you know, the, the clarity that you need and, and uh, the, kind of, um, the kind of approach that you need to play them is a very simple classical approach. And you're contrasting uh, that with the transcendental the trans etudes. Yes, I was, I was on my way to, yeah. do, to, to do a, a comparison with the transcendental etude by Liszt, which, uh, which are also incredibly difficult and, and also very, very technical and very, uh, very imaginative musically, also, but in a much wilder way, I would say. I mean, in a much more open way, and in a much, uh, how do you say, overboard, like uh, mm -hmm. unbuttoned, if you will, way. And and that was the way of Liszt, you know, that was the way of uh, of his uh, of his character. So he had. I mean, if we're talking classic romantic, Chopin was the classical and one, and, and Liszt was the definitely the romantic one. I mean. My God, like like Wagner, you know that he did not have an association with Wagner for nothing. I mean, it was it was like the Dante Sonata, for example. That, that's like I, I call it I call it a mini Wagner opera. You know, <laughs> I mean, it can be. You know, it it can be. It can be. I mean, it's very, very operatic. I mean, you know, it's the devil gets uh, the best music. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The, it's very operatic. It's like uh, in the first book, Valley Doberman, uh, is extraordinarily Wagnerian. My God. And also, there is a song, for example, by Liszt that starts uh, that starts exactly like Tristan. And it was composed, I understand it was composed before Tristan was mm. composed. I mean, it's the same introduction, you know. So there, there was, there was an a, a inter-influence place. And I think they, they both had an extraordinarily grandiose view of, of, of things and extraordinarily love, extraordinary love for music and, and expression. And they were, I mean, both geniuses, obviously, uh, but creative, you know, creative and well, well, well intended. I think yeah. there was there was a lot of honesty, an incredible amount of honesty in their work, and 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 that's obviously, you know, you cannot ask for more than that. You cannot ask for someone, uh, I mean, you know, to be a genius, to be honest, and to be helping others, and to have. Everything like that. Yeah. It's it's like you know. I don't think you can ask for more than that. One other challenge that Liszt gave to subsequent pianists is you mentioned his photographic memory, but mm -hmm. basically the tradition of uh, memorizing a recital uh, it really started with Liszt. Um, before that, if if you didn't have music, you were out there to improvise, you know, and the composers would improvise at the piano. Um, but with Liszt. He memorized everything. He didn't use the music. Mm -hmm. And is it a good thing that pianists have had to live with this ever since? Well, well obviously, you know, I always tell my students to learn like this. Very, very know about the scores. You know, know your scores, but then play like this. <laughs> you know? uh, uh, but you have to have a very good basis. I think. I think it is. I think it is good. I mean, I think if you if you take time to li to really look at the score, and and learn what's in the score, and and uh, take the indications seriously. 
uh, I think it can be transformed in uh, in hearing. You know, we all have in what we call an inner ear or something. You know, it's like yeah. when I look in a score, I can start hearing a little bit where where it's going because I can I, I hear the motion. You know, with, after all these years, you sit down at the instrument and you read. I mean, you you develop motions while while playing, obviously. 